Привет! Всем привет, друзья! С вами канал Рафаэль Анриэл. Ну что, ребята, сегодня настало время посмотреть рабочий БТГ-генератор на 25 киловатт, который делается в США. На своем канале я рассказываю про запрещенную науку и разные интересные технологии. Так что подписывайтесь, ставьте лайки и скидывайте интересные видео мне. Не думал я сегодня записывать видео, но тут выпустилось новое интересное видео, ребята. Про тот генератор, который вырабатывает 25 киловатт. Привет. Он называется генератор земли, типа земляной генератор, но по сути он работает на магнитах и гравитации, то есть как бы опять-таки усилитель. А дальше вы увидите принцип, как работает этот генератор, тут все прям рассказывается, показывается, и потом опять мы вернемся к тому, что... Этот генератор опять-таки работает по той же технологии, что по сути, помните первое видео, когда такая ручная дрочилка? Ну вот настал час и день, когда мы снимаем новый аппарат. Это движение руки, это движение руки затрачивается максимум 10 ватт на селеноидной катушке, но с вала снимается больше. Зазоры здесь сделаны по полтора, два, три миллиметра. В общем, это по сути то же самое. Опять-таки, просто под разным углом мы на это смотрим. Понимаете, ребят, давайте вот это делать, это же круто. Ладно, все, смотрим. develops about 2,600 pounds of magnetic force against another magnetic force that is located in the trigger assembly, which is driven by this lens. And I will get it started for you. This has no starter on it in any way, has no uh, motor to drive it. Uh, we have to put a little bit of inertia power into it to get it going, and then it'll be engaged and uh, it will get it uh, running up so we can show you the various functions in it. That should be enough, and then we'll go ahead and engage the engine. Now, as the engine winds up, we can see that the magnetic force only is pushing uh, this very, very large flywheel, and you can see it slowly accelerating. As you'll notice, there's absolutely no contact between the two magnetic forces. They are nearly gliding under each other. As the flywheel is driving, the Z-drive on top of this engine coming from the main shaft, which absolutely has no contact with the, uh, with the drive shaft, pulls power out, mechanical power, that we can drive into an alternator uh, pump or air compressor. Now, as you can see, there's absolutely no contact between the two magnetic forces that uh, as it's firing, as it's being exposed, that magnetic force, which we're just going to hold back on it, just going to let it go. I actually pick that 4,200 pounds up, ingest it, and actually get it to the other side for me so that when I fire, and I'll fire this by hand, You can see that the engine fires and starts its rotation. Uh, that's the magnetic push that we're talking about. That is about 2,600 pounds of force that's forcing that flywheel to spin. And we'll bring it back around. And of course, if you hit it three times, every time it rotates, um, just like a three-cylinder car, you pick up a tremendous amount of energy. And again, we're only expecting about 52 watts to fire the, uh, to fire the trigger. This is a, a dull razor blade uh, that I used for demonstration. It's got a little bit of carbon steel in it, which allows me to control it um, so that I can actually demonstrate the field. Uh, this magnet has, as I say, about 2,600 pounds, has a very strong field. Just drop this, and you can hear it hit. And that's not a lot of mass in a razor blade, and you can really hear it smack. And as you can see, the uh, razor blade itself wants to land on its edge because the field is so strong. No matter where I drop it, it lands on its edge. Now, even though it has all of that power on that side, on what's called at the top, uh, on the side facing us, the fuel, this red marker here, I'm just gonna hold this, and you can see it's very, very strong, about a foot out, I can hold this, right here, you can see it picking it up, 
and sliding on. Yet, uh, this is regular steel here, and I've got a big magnet on it. The rest of this steel does not become a magnet, which would normally happen. I can actually park that razor blade right there and it won't move. If I attempt to do that the same distance over on this side, it lifts it right out of my hand. Uh, now, why is that? Well, the field is directed. As I move in, I've got a lessened and a weaker field. There's that field there. When I get to the inside, I don't have any magnetic potential at all. I can just drop the razor blade and pick it up. Uh, that's best demonstrated by showing you that it's not picking up the other pole. So when I'm here, a very strong magnetic field. As I come under here, and if I'm careful, I gotta go very, very slow so I don't get picked up by the edge. And I come up here, as you can see, I have very, very, very weak magnetic field. I'll just trace it along there. And I can actually go right about under that magnet. If I move my hand, you'll see it sucked up around the edge. So if I move it. Bob Serino, and I'm the director of machine operations. And these are some of the parts, not all of them, that we, we make right here in-house. You notice the training facility, we make, we make several of these parts here. I make the parts <laughs> and help assemble and then that's ready to ship the labor. Right. So we don't manage we buy that. But we make this. We give a whole house. Oh. That's a design here. Quick video. Dennis explaining the engines and then after we do QA. Let's have questions. Paul and Dennis Danzig and welcome to the inducted center. He's National Training Center located here in Scottsdale, Arizona. I really appreciate okay. all of you taking the time and effort to come out and see us and get it introduced to a great new technology uh, that's really been 10 years in the making, magnetic propulsion. I'm here in the power room. I'm going to take you through uh, what these two marvelous engines do and how they perform and the basics of how they operate. Now, you can't learn a lot in 10 or 15 minutes of the presentation, but the thing that I want to impress upon each and every one of you is you're welcome back anytime. You can come out here in Scottsdale, we'll actually spend the day with you uh, if you have an interest in participating in inductance energy uh, as an investor or perhaps even a jurisdictional operator. We're looking for great manufacturers all over the world to get involved with magnetic propulsion. The two engines in this room are Model 30, uh, which is approximately about nine months old, and our Model 32, which is our first installed commercial model outside of the inductance energy department uh, actually in customers uh, locations and operating uh, as we speak uh, here today model 30 and model 32 have one thing in common uh, is this 2000 pound uh, flywheel the top flywheel here we affectionately call carol and the bottom we call joyce and that's been their laboratory name since day one both of these flywheels have absolutely no contact with any motors, chains, drives, or gears of any magic. They both spin bi-directional and can continue to do so freely. There's absolutely no braking involved. The only difference between Model 30 and Model 32 is this Z-Drive. On Model 30, it is not integrated into the flywheel. On Model 32, as you can see, it is. Below that, here on Model 32, I want to point out and I want to get them out. Well, we would love to, love to talk to them, love to work with them. Let's see, what else was there? Oh, one for Las Vegas for a medical facility. So those are the, the current ones that are scheduled to be installed. Those are in process right now. And then you've got a, a, a link back to this last station here so that you can monitor that you can have computers monitoring it and so right. any variation of what happened you know so and 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 you, you literally will be able to operate it remotely with bluetooth 
installation of SRI that's outside. It's really our sixth installation, mm -hmm. but it's at a customer location. So it's in a shooting range in the back. What, what's your um, plan, like say there's something that needs maintenance, like does a, saw a team member from here go out to where that place is? Yeah, we have, we, have uh, we would have a mechanic in every state in which it's operated, though that's an IEC person. Um, we're opening these by jurisdiction, by state jurisdiction. And we have about six of them in development right now. The engines will be manufactured in that state, the vast majority of them. What we will make here is fuel and automation sections. So our first fuel facilities in Wyoming, we were uh, given and bought um, uh, from the federal government part of a, a defunct Air Force base. So we have 168 acres up there um, with building. Is the clear <laughs> see through demonstration motor that they're gonna make for the sequester lockdown testing. And here's the facility. What is this, about 40,000 square feet? Just a little under 30,000. 30,000 square feet, all right. Lots of motors being assembled. Ну что, друзья, вот такое вот видео. Надеюсь, что вам понравилось. Подписывайтесь на канал, ставьте лайки и подкидывайте мне тоже какие-то идеи и видео. Пока-пока.